Shan Kazi then opened up his upper cloth and showed Lord Chaitanya and all the devotees the nail marks of Lord Narasimha Dev scratched across his chest. And then he went on. He said, I sent some people to stop the Sankirtan. Very special spirit soul. It's offering obeisances to Sami Grishi. <laughs> Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj he used to feed rascoolas to the dogs of Navadweep. He would praise them, such special spirit souls. So the Chankazi sent soldiers out to stop the Sankirtan. And he said, these soldiers came running back to me. They said, as soon as we came near them and we heard their chanting, immediately our beards set on fire. We, we couldn't put it out. It was just blazing fire. It scorched our faces and our cheeks. Just look, John Kazi, look. Don't send us out there again. John Kazi said, at that time I became very worried. And then some other soldiers came back. And they told me that we went out to try to stop them. But all we could hear in all directions was the names of Krishna. Hari Hari. Hari Hari. They're just chanting Hari Hari. Hari Hari. Hari, Hari. Hari, Hari. Hari, Hari. And Kazi. Hari Hari. Hari Hari. All we can Hari Hari. All we can do is Hari Hari. Hari, Hari. We can't say anything but Hari Hari. Hari Hari. Hari, Hari. Hari, Hari. said, my Gaur Hari, all they could do is say Hari Hari. <laughs> and then some of these ritualistic Brahmins came to me, really angry. This Nimai Pandit is spoiling our Hindu religion. You are, the, you are the government head. It is your duty to protect everyone. You must protect our religion. These are secret mantras that are meant exclusively to be chanted within our hearts. Do you know what they're doing? By chanting the names of our Hindu gods loudly, all the power of the names of God will be diminished and our religion will be finished. You must stop them. I was thinking at that time about the burning beards, about Hari Hari. So I said, just be patient. I will stop them. I will stop them. Just go home now. John Kazi then said, O Gaur Hari, in your Vedic scriptures, the Supreme Lord is known as Narayan. Today, I know for sure that you are that Lord Narayan. You are the God of all living entities. You are the supreme person who is worshipped in all the religions. And I bow my head and surrender at your lotus feet. Lord Goranga, very humbly, he said, I have one request I want to ask of you. Never again obstruct the congregational chanting of my holy names. John Kazi made a promise, a vow. He said, in my life and in the life of all my descendants, I take this vow that no one will ever in any way obstruct the congregational chanting 
of the holy names of Krishna. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu blessed Chan Kazi with Prema Bhakti. Taking leave, he went outside and joined all the devotees in Nam Sankirtan, and Chan Kazi came to join. <laughs> but Lord Chaitanya, understanding his position, requested him to go home. But he accepted him as his own devotee. This is very relevant. relevant. Srila Prabhupada explains how Mahatma Gandhi, he was instrumental in, in freeing India of the power of the British government through civil disobedience. But Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was the founder of the civil disobedience movement without even the slightest bit of violence to any living being, they proved their point and gained their freedom. He said, this is our Hare Krishna movement. He said, it is not our object to cause harm, physical harm to anyone, but through philosophy, through logic, and through the purity of our purpose, we will overcome all of our, all obstacles. Now in Krishna's Leela, Chan Kazi was Kamsa. Today we went to Chan Kazi's Samadhi. That area in Navadweep is none different than Mathura, the home of Kamsa. When Krishna went to Mathura, he liberated Kamsa with a nice punch in his chest. Several punches, actually. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's Leela, Prabhupada explains, is supremely merciful. The difference between Krishna and Lord Chaitanya Krishna liberated Kamsa by ending his life and liberating his soul. Lord Chaitanya transformed Kamsa's heart to become a pure, unalloyed devotee through the chanting of the holy name and through his mercy. Because Chan Kazi was sometimes, as an intimate name, called Champak, at his samadhi they planted a Champak tree. And just near it is a Neem tree representing Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And the intimate loving relationship. Because Kamsa was also Krishna's uncle. John Kazi said to Lord Chaitanya, I'm your uncle. <laughs> but he became his loving devotee. That is Mahaprabhu's supreme mercy. Tava avatara tara siromani kevala ananda kanda. Lochandas Thakur tells of Lord Chaitanya, you are the essence of all incarnations. And the process you're giving is so joyful, chanting, dancing, and feasting. Shall I continue? After delivering the Chan Kazi and making him into a Prema Bhakti, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and the Kirtan party carried on. They performed their chanting and dancing through several other villages. And then they came to Simantadweep. 
And Lord Chaitanya brought the kirtan party to the house of Kolavecha Sridhar. And now we will begin tonight's class. We have concluded the introduction. <laughs> Kolavecha Sridhar's house was one beaten up tiny little room. That's all. It was just a thatched hut of one room. And he had no furniture. There's no record that he even had a change of clothes. Very simple, very poor person. The only piece of furniture he had was just at the doorway of his house, he kept a very old, beaten up iron cup that he would use for cleaning, he would use for drinking, it contained water. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu dancing right to the house of Kaldavecha Sridhar. He looked at that iron cup. Vrindavan Das Thakur said that cup had so many dents and so many scratches. It was so beaten and so old. Even a desperate thief would not even place his glance on that cup. It was absolutely worthless materially. But to Lord Chaitanya, that cup, that beaten iron pot was more valuable than all the wealth in Brahma's universal creation. Why? Because it contained the water that was drunk by Kolavecha Sridhar. Lord Chaitanya went right up to that old iron cup and picked it up, drank from it. Sridhar was absolutely devastated. He fell to the ground, trembling, crying out, Now I am dead. Now I am finished. I clean my body with that. I drink from that. And the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the husband of Goddess of Fort Lakshmi, has drunk that water from my own mouth? I'm, I'm dead. He fell unconscious. Upon tasting the sweet nectar of that ordinary water, by material calculation, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wept torrential tears of ecstasy. His limbs trembled and his hair stood on end. And he cried out with deep emotion that today, for the first time in my life, I have tasted pure devotional service. Today I have realized true love for Krishna because I have been blessed by the water drunk by Kolavecha Shrita. <clears throat> because the Lord was such an emotional state when he said those words, the devotees could not control themselves. How the Lord is conquered by even a, the simplest offering of love of his devotee. Adwaita Charya, Gadadhar Pandit, Haridas Thakur, Vakreshwar Pandit, Chandrasekhar Acharya, Budimanta Khan, uh, Srivas Thakur, Sri Ram, Sri Pati, Sri Nidhi, Murari Gupta, Gangadas Pandit, Gopinatha Acharya, Sri Garba, Sriman Pandit, all these devotees and more, seeing the Lord's love for Kaldavecha Sridhar, they could not control themselves. They were rolling on the ground weeping.
the Supreme Personality of Godhead will not even look at the direction of a vessel that is solid gold, embedded with rubies, emeralds, diamonds, or even the jewels of the heavenly planets. If it is in the pot of one who does not have sincere devotion. But this poor little banana seller, Kolavecha Sridhar, his beaten up old iron pot, with just apparently ordinary well water that he personally had washed himself with and drunk to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, that water tasted sweeter than any heavenly nectar. And that pot was more precious than all the wealth in creation. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, years before, he predicted to Kolavecha Sridhar, someday I am going to expose the great treasure that you are hiding from the world. And on this night, after the deliverance of Chan Kazi, on the occasion of the first Harinam Sankirtan procession in the history of Lord Chaitanya's movement, he revealed the supreme treasure of Sridhar, the treasure of his pure, unalloyed, devotional service. Very interesting. Because if someone has devotion, when they offer the Lord boga, the Lord accepts it. If someone doesn't have devotion, even if they make, even if they have all the rituals perfectly well, the mantras, the tantras, the yantras, the mudras, and the pudras, and everything else, the Lord doesn't care. He only accepts devotion. Patram pushpam palam toyam yome bhakta prayachchati. But if someone sincerely loves the Lord, the Lord doesn't even, he's so eager to taste the offering of that devotee, he can't even wait until he offers it. He just steals it. Vrindavan Das Thakur said, that's what happened with Sudama Vipra. In Dwarka, because of his love, he didn't offer anything to the Lord. The Lord stole it. He was hungry for it. See, like that. <laughs> Not like that, but. <laughs> the Lord, he's conquered by his devotees. He's starving for the love of his devotees. Even without offering, he steals. Hari, he steals the love of his devotees. That is the Lord's eternal nature. Through this beautiful pastime of Kolavecha Sridhar, the Lord revealed the essence of life. It is a simple story. Many of us heard it so many times. But it's everything. Because of our conditionings, our tendency is to get caught up with so many superficialities and think that that is what spiritual advancement is about. Yes, we should try to learn many slokas so that we can use them in a spirit of devotion. But learning a hundred thousand slokas doesn't mean you're making any spiritual advancement. Position. Sometimes we think, I'm making progress if I have the position of a temple commander or a head pujari or a temple president or a GBC or 
a guru, shiksha guru, diksha guru. Or I'm making progress if I could remain a staunch brahmachari. Or I will make progress if I can be a very honorable householder and do all my mantras, tantras, yantras, mudras, and pudras. <laughs> and give nice donations. Or it's, I'm making progress if I have hundreds of followers, or thousands of followers, or tens and thousands, or hundreds and thousands of followers. And have my own television station, and millions of people are watching and listening to my every word and sending donations. <laughs> According to the story, none of that necessarily has anything to do with spiritual advancement. It could if it's based, if it's built on the foundation of humble, simple, pure devotion. Krishna Hari 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 Ram Hari Ram 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 Hari Hari Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hari 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 Ram Hari Ram 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 Hari Hari Where was I? Krishna is only pleased by our devotion. We want to cultivate that devotion in our hearts. We must be very, very careful not to be distracted by these material temptations. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, the bhakti lata bij, it is like a seed, and one must be like a careful gardener. One must pour the water on the seed, the water of hearing and chanting the names and glories of the Lord, the water of service to the Lord and his devotees. And if one's heart is humble and simple, it's like a fertilized soil. that is necessary for the hearing and chanting to make the small creeper grow. But along with it, as you're watering the bhakti lata bija, many material weeds will grow. And what are those weeds? Pratishta. The desire for adoration and distinction, prestige. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur said, we should see the pleasure of prestige to be as abominable as the dung of a boar. Now, I don't want to bore you by going into any details. 
but you can understand how abominable we sh it is to a great soul. Attachment to position and all kinds of attachments to material facilities that we can draw, when, that we can enjoy will inevitably come to us as a test as we're making spiritual progress. We have to be fixed on the essence. If we want to achieve the essence, we must be fixed on the essence. And we see sometimes people do get distracted. And then out of Krishna's mercy, he gives you some powerful purification. Some terminal illness or something where you realize everything's gone. What is the use of my prestige? What is the use of my facilities? What is the use of the sense gratification I'm getting? It's all... And then if we're sincere, we just shun it all and just take shelter of the essence. But why do we have to go through that? We should cultivate the essence now. The essence of what Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu taught us through this incident with Kaulavecha Sridhar, that he is conquered only by one thing, the humble, simple love of the heart, our intent to please him, to please his devotees. We should not want anything but that. And everything Krishna gives us should only be used for that purpose. Another very wonderful lesson of this story is how obstacles are our friends. When the lights went out, I heard the most serious chanting of the whole night. Hare Krishna. Lord Chaitanya did not begin his Harinam Sankirtan movement until there was a major disaster. Very, very significant. Why didn't he just go out on a regular day and just say, okay, devotees, let's go out of the house onto the streets? No. He told the devotees, he told the townspeople, you chant. But he did not go out with any of his Vaishnav devotees until people were being beaten, people were being imprisoned, people were being persecuted, people were being plundered, and it was against all odds, against the entire government and all the powers of the government. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wanted to show us when there is opposition, when there is obstacles in our spiritual life, that is the time we can access the highest mercy if we have faith and take shelter of the Lord, his devotees, and his holy names. Shigoranga Mahaprabhu Ki May I tell one more story? One night in Srivasa's house, shortly after this incident, they were performing Nam Sankirtan, and Srivas heard crying in one of the back rooms. He went back and found that his son, who had a disease and a high fever, had died. The ladies of the house and others who were back there, they were weeping. They were inconsolable. Their child was dead. Srivas was very grave. He said, don't you understand how fortunate this child is? The Supreme Lord of the Universe, Lord Goranga, is in our house, dancing in ecstasy, performing Nam Sankirtan, 
in the presence of all the greatest of Vaishnavas, they're all chanting. In this setting, our child left his body. He will certainly go home back to Godhead. I only wish I had the fortune to die in such a fortunate situation someday. But Lord Chaitanya is in ecstasy dancing. If he finds out that our son dies, has died, it will disturb his happiness. His happiness is my life, my soul, my everything. You should be happy that our child has gone back to Godhead, but if you must cry, do it silently. But if you disturb my Lord's happiness, I will have no recourse but to drown myself in the river Ganges. They were silent. Srivas Thakur went back into the kirtan. When he saw Lord Chaitanya smiling in bliss, dancing in kirtan, Srivas leaped in the air in ecstasy. <laughs> hours and hours went by. Little by little, the news of the son's death reached the ears of the different devotees. And they were all lamenting. Lord Chaitanya could sense. Of course, he knows everything. He inquired from Srivas, I feel something very sad has taken place in your home. What happened, Srivas? And Srivas smiled and he said, My Lord, with you dancing in my house, nothing inauspicious could happen, only happiness and joy. Then somebody else said, My Lord, his son died. Lord Chaitanya said, What? When did this happen? happened many hours ago. The Lord said, why didn't anyone tell me? The devotees said, because Srivas did not want to disturb your happiness in Namsan, in Kirtan for even a moment. So he made everyone quiet. When Lord Chaitanya heard that, he did something that stunned everyone. He broke down and wept incessantly and cried out, Srivas, how much you love me. You love me so much that for my happiness, you're not even willing to lament for the death of your own son? The Lord cried and cried. And then he said something very mysterious. He said, Srivas, your love is so pure. Your love is so selfless, unconditional. How could I ever give up your association? What will happen on that day when I have to give up your association? How will I survive? The devotees were very confused. What is the Lord saying? What is he talking? What will happen when I give up association? Because the Lord knew that very soon in the future, for the sake of reaching out to the most fallen souls, he would leave Navadweep to take sannyas. Knowing he was going to do that, he was weeping that night. How can I give up the association of such a loving devotee as Srivastakur? The Lord then led everyone into the room where the child was laying lifeless. And to everyone's great amazement, Sri Goranga spoke to the dead corpse, said, my child, please tell me why did you leave your father's home? Before everyone's eyes, the little boy sat up and spoke. 
By Lord Chaitanya's power, he raised the child from the dead. The boy said, Oh my Lord, you are my master and I am your eternal servant. You are the supreme controller and I am like a puppet that must act according to the destiny that you have given me. For many days I have had the good fortune of living in the house of Srivas and being in the association of you and all of these great Vaishnavas. But now according to my karma, my allotted town to live here has expired and I must leave to go into another body. My only prayer, my Lord, is wherever you may send me, please allow me to always remember you. Allow me to always remember you and be your devotee. Who is my father? Who is my mother? You are my eternal father and mother. Now with your permission, according to your desire, I will depart. Lord Chaitanya gave his blessing. The child lay down again and became lifeless. But at this point, everyone was happy, full of joy. They understood that this child had been delivered. That we're not this body, we're the eternal soul. And for a devotee, the soul will go wherever the Lord has his sweet will for that soul to go. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu personally led the procession for the last rites of that child at the river Ganges. Then they all took their bath in the Ganges and came back to Sri Thakur's house to perform kirtan. And Lord Chaitanya spoke then his eternal words. He said, Srivas, because of your love for me, you may have lost one son, but today I give you my word that Nityananda Prabhu and myself will be your eternal sons. And all the relatives and all the people assembled fell at Lord Chaitanya's lotus feet and they cried, you are our mother, you are our eternal father, you are our eternal friend, you are our eternal guide, you are everything to us. May we always remember your lotus feet. And Lord Chaitanya taught us how we can always remember him. The most powerful and simple of all methods in the association of his devotees to hear his teachings, to hear his pastimes, to hear his glories, to speak them, and to give up all envy, and in the mood of a genuine servant, of the servant of the servant, to be a real well-wisher of the Vaishnavas, come together to dance and to chant the holy name. Yeah. Srila Prabhupada, our beloved founder Acharya and spiritual master, has given us entrance into the eternal pastimes of Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It is not something distant that we can hope to achieve in a future life. Srila Prabhupada taught us, for real, that when we are assisting in Lord Chaitanya's mission by propagating Krishna consciousness in this world, and we are sincerely chanting the holy names and living by his teachings, even today, we are 
personal associates of Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda, and we are participating in his eternal transcendental pastimes. And as we purify ourselves through this process, we gradually realize the supreme fortune we have had since the day we came to the Hare Krishna movement. Prabhupada said, you're already liberated if you're following these teachings. But as you become purified, you realize your liberated state. We realize how Srila Prabhupada, by his infinite mercy, has brought us all into these eternal, loving pastimes of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. What to speak of participating in these pastimes in his eternal realm of Shivadweep Dham. On this day, let us bow our heads at the lotus feet of his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, who by his selfless compassion has given us the ultimate treasure the ultimate goal and the ultimate aspiration. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna.